Hi, this is Mr. West, and you are watching a walkthrough video for Spot the Inequality on a Number Line 2. This, of course, is from MathSoundMenders.com. Make sure to check out their website in the link in the description below. They have amazing math resources. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So before we start, we are supposed to be writing inequalities. That's these things right here for each of these graphs. So we need to be able to interpret what these graphs look like and what they mean. So first thing, this is a less than or equal to, this is a greater than or equal to sign. And just to remind you what those mean, you may recall back in your elementary school years where the alligator is gonna open up and eat the bigger number, okay? And it doesn't matter which way it's facing, it's always gonna face the bigger number, meaning the smaller number is on the left or the right of the inequality, just not opening up to that number. So if we're looking at these, now we see that there's two different types. The first type that we notice is this sign right here. That's the one I just mentioned. And that means one number is bigger than another. So I could put some values in here. And the values I could put is five and one. So that's a true statement. Five is greater than one because it's opening up to five. But if I put something like this, that is not true because one is not greater than one. Now, the same is true above. I could say five is greater than one. That'd be true, okay, if I just leave these up here. But I can also put it one is greater than or equal to one. Notice how this sign, the greater than or less than or equal to sign, um, looks like a combination of a equal sign and, whoops, I meant to put just this line underneath and a less than sign. So it's both of those. So either one can apply. So is one less than? No, but it is equal to one. And that's why when we are graphing it, it's gonna be represented with that solid circle. That means that number value can be included in the solution set, whereas below, remember I had it below here like this, we're gonna represent that with an open circle like that because that number cannot be included. It doesn't make a true statement. So that's kind of like the founding principles. The other thing that's gonna help us understand is when we're graphing to the right and to the left, okay? So when we're graphing to the left with our arrows, we're looking for any of the any time that the, the variable or the values that we can input are less than um, another value, like five or 10 or whatever it is. So you notice here that it's not opening up to the variable, all of these, and it doesn't matter which side it's on, it's opening up to some numbers. So some numbers here being eaten by the alligator and the variable, the values that are possible solutions, are not being eaten, okay? So anytime that happens, you are gonna graph to the left. Now, the converse is true. We are going to be graphing to the right anytime the variable is being eaten, meaning it is bigger than the number, okay? So this is bigger here, and this is going to be smaller here, and that means all the possible solutions are bigger than that number, so you graph to the right, okay? With that in that understanding, and you can pause, rewind, any of that, um, we'll be able to tackle these inequalities. And we're actually going to start with number four. Number four, we see that it's our first job is to find where the circle is, okay? So the circle is between six and seven, and I know that means it's 6.5. So what I like to do is I like to write 6.5 here on the right, because I like to put my variable, so I put my number on the right, and I like to put my variable on the left. Okay, so my variables are gonna be on the left, and now this is kind of where I need some interpretation. First, I notice it's a solid circle, a solid dot, which means I know it's either gonna be this symbol, or this symbol right there. I know it's one of those. It can't be this one or that one because 6.5 is included in the solution. Therefore, it needs to have a solid dot. Now, I need to decide, is it going to the right or to the left, okay? Here I see it's clearly graphed to the right, so I know that my variable needs to be eaten by the alligator. I'll just make it X for now. So X is greater than or equal to 6.5. When you say it like that, sometimes it's like, well, what does that mean, X? It's, like, it's just talking about all the possible solutions. So all the possible solutions are greater than 6.5, okay? Now, what we can do here is we're like, hey, I'm still not sure. We can always just put in a value for x, substitute a value, a solution, and test it. So we could put in 10. Is 10 bigger than or equal to 6.5? Notice 10 is right here on the graph. 
And the answer is yes, 10 is bigger than or equal to 6.5. So if that number is included, 10, that means 9, 8, 7, 6.9, 6.8, 12. All of those are included, so our graph is going to go from 6.5, and it's going to go straight across and have all those as solutions. We could conversely test a non-solution. So we could test like the number 2 and say, hey, is 2 bigger than or equal to 6.5? Question mark. And the answer is no, 2 is not bigger. Therefore, that value, nor any of the values to the left, are not going to be solutions, so it's not going to be part of the graph. So I can go ahead and erase it. And that's how it works. So we can go ahead and jump to number 5, and we're going to first find our critical value. That's negative 6. So I'm going to go ahead and write negative 6. Okay, like I said, I like to put my number on the right. And now I'm looking here, and I see that's an open circle. That means negative 6 cannot be a solution. So I'm looking at this one or this one, okay? Less than or equal, or sorry, or equal to, just less than or greater than. Now I'm thinking, okay, it's graphing to the left. That means my variable needs to be smaller than that number. Okay, so I already have the correct one right there, and I can go ahead and put a variable. Let's just make it m. So m is less than negative 6. Okay, all the values that are solutions are smaller, and we're talking about smaller, we're talking about going to the left. Okay, more small. Notice how like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, getting smaller and smaller as we move to the left. Okay, so that is our solution, and that's our inequality. If you're having tr uh, trouble with negative numbers, you can always remember that it's like temperature and colder temperatures are more negative, warmer temperatures are more positive, okay? Now, some of these have two circles. So what do we do with those? Well, we can go ahead and start with number one. Okay, this is number one. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna write down these two values, okay? So now we're not gonna write on the right side. We're gonna write here and here. It doesn't really matter where exactly. Okay, we, we, we might have to move it later on, okay? But just know that 9 and 14 are going to be our values. Now, we essentially have some overlap here, and I'm going to treat them separately first. I'm going to completely ignore the one on the right for now, okay? So if I were to just graph this inequality, okay, so 9, and we're talking about the values bigger than that. So we know it's not going to be less than or equal to, okay? But I'm talking about the values greater. That means my variable needs to be eaten, Okay, my variable is bigger. All the solutions are bigger. Oh, it says inequality for x. Sorry, you can't write m. You need to write x. Okay, but technically you can write m for uh, a different scenario. It's the same thing. Um, so we have 9 is less than x, or x is greater than 9. We're talking about the value is bigger than that. However, we can't do that because even though 16 is bigger than 9, look where 16 is. It's not on the graph. Therefore, I have to combine this with another inequality. Let's take a look. Okay, so if I look at this, I see I have a second inequality here. I'm going to ignore this one on the left now. And I have x is less than 14. It's a circle, so it's not included in the solution set 14. And it's going to the left, so x needs to be smaller. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write this. Move that over. I told you it was going to be moving that over. And it looks like this, okay? However, we can combine these two together to make one inequality. And it looks like this. Since we have 9 is less than x, and x is less than 14, essentially it's like an inequality sandwich with x in the middle. Notice how all our solutions are between these two numbers, okay? Between 9 and 14. And they're not included. So there's our x solutions. And it stops there at 9 and 14. And that's it. That's what it looks like. So I promise it's not so bad. Anytime you have that situation where it's like in between like that, you're going to have x in between those two numbers. So for this one, I want to put 2 and 11 down. Notice how they're included, okay, because they're solid dots. So I know it's going to be some sort of less than or greater, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, okay? And notice how the solutions are in between. So if I were to just consider this one, I know that x needs to be bigger than this one. And if I were to consider just 11, okay, I know that uh, 11 needs to be bigger than or equal to x because it's going to the left, okay? And then I can just combine the two, and it looks like that, okay? And that works every time. So for this one, I'm going to go a little bit faster now. We have 9. I'm going to write 9 there. I have 1.5 on there, and I know x is going to be in between because it stops 
to the right or to the left. And so I know this one, the one with 1.5, is a less than symbol because it can't be included. But the 9 is the less than or equal to, so it can be included. And that's what that one looks like. Um, and that's what all of these are going to be. So number 8, jumping down to that one, we have a negative 3.5. And we have negative 1.5. And then the negative 1.5 is included. The negative 3.5 is not. And x is in the middle. And that's all there is to this activity. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or you want me to do more of these questions. I appreciate you taking some time to watch. Make sure to check out my YouTube channel if you want to see more Math Salamanders videos. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.